Welcome to this PCB design tutorial. In this multi-part series, we're going to be building the next version of this on-air board. So I'm really excited about this project because it's already gone through two revisions, one as a prototype run and one as a mass order run. And I sent this out to a lot of people and they gave me a lot of feedback on what kind of features they want for the next version. Right now, you can adjust the intensity using this slider and you can turn on and off the display using this button. It's also USB-C powered. All this was achieved using a single buck converter and I am adjusting the feedback loop using the slider. So in this version, I wanna be able to control the sign digitally so it can turn on automatically based on your calendar settings. And in order to do that, we're gonna be adding an ESP32 to this board and I want to be able to control the intensity digitally so we could get rid of this potentiometer. In this part of the series, I'm gonna go over everything you need to know about project setup. So start with the basics, such as blank, starting a blank project, forking, cloning, setting up permissions, and then we'll dive into things that you can do during the project setup phase to set yourself up for success, such as providing context to Copilot or creating and using modules. Welcome to designing your first PCB in Flux. One of my favorite things about Flux is how easy it is to create a new project. I'd say I do this for about 60% of the projects I do. I just have an idea, I wanna run with it. I don't wanna spend like 30 minutes setting up boilerplate. You can just start dragging components in and configuring things on the fly. I think Flux is forgiving. So don't be afraid to just start a project and mess up because there's usually an undo button or some way to change your design down the road. So once you've created your project, one of the first things you wanna do is rename it up here. Uh, you can add a description here to provide context to other users, yourself, as well as Copilot. You might have seen that some of my projects have these images. To add an image to your project, you go into Assets, Add, Add Item, take your picture. I usually remove the background of a picture of the PCB itself. If you have multiple pictures, you'll see this option not grayed out that says set this as thumbnail. One of the things that a lot of people forget is the change of permissions on your project. It's kind of like Google Docs here. You can give anyone in the world editing, viewing, or commenting permissions on your project. And to share it, you just give them the link in your browser bar. For now, I'm, I'll give anyone on the internet commenting access. And in the advanced menu, I will give my other account uh, editing permissions. Here you can add a collaborator, your friends uh, who are working on the project with you. And that's how you set up permissions and viewing. Although it's very easy to start from scratch in Flux, there are two options that Flux gives you to start your project with further progress. So the first one would be cloning or forking projects. And the second one is starting projects from templates. Let's first go into cloning. It's awesome we're working on the on-air project because the first version I made for this board was a clone from Brooks board, and I just added my own touches to it. So Brooks is a designer and he did all the hard work for me of finding the graphics and laying out the LEDs, as you can see here. And what I did is I went in and added some electrical stuff, you know, like I added a butt converter so you can change the intensity of the LEDs. And all I had to do was click on this button and go into clone project um, to my account. If you have orgs, you'll see all the organizations you can clone your project into, but if you don't, it will just clone, when you click this button, it will just clone to your account. You might also see the button fork. And what that does is it just leaves a link to the project that you cloned it from. There's really no difference as of right now, but down the road, Flex wants to support merging your project back uh, after you've forked from it. As you can see, once you clone the project, you just kind of own it in your account. But if you fork the project, you'll see that uh, it will provide a link that says forked from, and this is a link to the original project that we forked it from. Another note, in order to fork or clone a project, you must have at least viewing permissions. What that means is whoever has viewing permissions to your project can easily copy your project and make changes to their copy of your project. However, you will be notified by email if somebody clones your project. Just to illustrate the point, uh, this is Brooke's original project. I only have commenting permissions. So I cannot drag components around. I cannot also add components. I cannot delete components. I can add comments because I do have commenting permission. I did that with C. And in this project that I cloned, I can drag parts in. Uh, I can also move parts freely, delete nets if I wanted to. And of course I could add comments. One thing to note is when you clone projects, the comments do not get copied over for privacy reasons. The other way that Flex makes it really easy to not have to start from scratch every time 
is project templates. You can make any project a template and it will be saved in your project templates. The one that I use the most is my base template because as you use Flux more and more, there's gonna be certain setups that pertain to your design flow better. For example, I have rule sets that hide the designators and change the font size or remove values. And I just have to add that every single time I do a layout. And I'd like to start from that point if I am gonna start from scratch. So if you're looking for a resource on where you can find these projects and templates to clone, you can go to flux.ai p, which is the landing page, click on explore. And here's a bunch of projects that you can clone and start editing. Just have fun with it, learn how they work maybe. If you sort by templates, Here's some for Copilot to guide Copilot. Here's some for Raspberry Pi hats. Another cool use case is manufacturers will actually come in and give you their design rule constraints in a template. So if you know you're going with Eisler or JLC PCB, come check this out. Let's bring it back to the project at hand. Here, we're pretty much ready to go. We have a description that gives a lot of information to the user. One thing I might add is properties to guide Copilot. So if we wanna be more specific, let's add our operating voltage. This also helps other users just know what our inputs are and I might say our connectivity requirements. I want this to work uh, based off Wi-Fi and I want our operating voltage to be five volts for USB. Um, potentially, we could uh, go off 4.2 volts from a lithium ion battery. Just to quickly show how Copilot might use that information, I can say, hey, Copilot, how would I power this project? from USB-C and a lithium-ion battery. So let's quickly look over what Copilot said and get an idea for what its capabilities are. It's saying that I could use a power delivery negotiator chip. I don't think this is necessary for this project, but it's cool that it gave me a part number. I could look into that later. Uh, for the battery charging IC, I'm very familiar with this part, as well as the TP4056. That's a really common one that you can use for a 1S system. It's really cheap saying that I need a load switch or a power multiplexer if I want to use them both simultaneously or just like automatically switch between them. This is cool. Um, it gave me a part number I could look into. Yep, it's just telling me, watch out for some stuff. Don't forget to put decoupling capacitors. You know, of course, every EE tells you that. So I'm not surprised Copilot also is telling me that. So what I just did here was access Copilot through the chat panel, but you can also access Copilot in the canvas by hovering over Copilot. And if you press ask a question, you can ask Copilot whatever you want. What is your name? <laughs> you might have seen some other options. Those work on specific components. So you can right click over a component, hover over Copilot, and you can ask for replacements, uh, minimize costs, or even ask Copilot to explain what that component does. So I think it'd be really unsatisfying if we finish the video without anything on the PCB. So let me show you with modules how we can get 80% of the work done in like 30 seconds. Some users have gone in and actually modularized the letters themselves. So they've added the silk, the LEDs, they've added the connections between them. And we just never have to do that work ever again. Let's spell out on air. All right, so I've dragged in all the modules. Uh, you probably can't see these because of a rendering problem. I think they take some time to render. But I was saying we have this silk object, we have all the LEDs uh, connected to each other. And just so I'll, I'll rearrange it later, but we can go to 3D view to see what it looks like. So I just showed you one instance of a module. If you want to find more modules, you can click on this filter, which finds components with layouts, meaning that it's a module and you can look for things like a 3.3 volt LDO. Now you never have to build that yourself. However, if you need to build your own module like we do in this project, let me show you how to do that. So you just create a new project and as long as it has a layout, it can be published as a module. The thing to understand is with modules, they can only interact with the outside world when we drag them in. They can only interact with the outside world through terminals. So these are the only native objects of Flux, really. Everything else is user contributed. And with terminals, uh, I'm going to prototype my module kind of like in programming. When you prototype a function, you just write the function as well as its inputs and outputs, what parameters you could take in, what you can output. This is very similar to that. And let's say our input is VN, you know, so what I want this module to be is actually a controllable buck converter. So let's say I want to call this a uh, five volt in input to variable output button converter controlled through SPI interface. Let's add our ground terminal and let's add that SPI interface and we're done prototyping this function.
All right, so I finished my function prototype. We can always change this down the road. And I wanted to go over how you can access these modules. So the way you consume them is through the library. You just drag and drop them in. And to put them in the library, you publish it. So you press Control P or Command P and you click Publish. One thing that's important to note is the permissions on your project. If your permissions are set to private, then only you can access your module through the library. However, if you change the permissions to anyone can view, and then you publish it, oops. Now anyone on the internet can go into the library and find your module. And let's just look for that module. I just copy the title, drag it in. As you can see, our interfaces are now here. We have our spy bus and we have our ground and V in and V out. Right now it's a black box that does nothing. And in the future, in future videos, we'll turn it into a black box that actually does what it says it's gonna do. It might actually be faster to do your project without modules, so feel free to skip that part because you can always come back to it and modularize a part of your design that you know works. And now that you know how to set up your project for success, join me next time as I show you how to navigate the schematic features and workflows in Flux.